camera on. Was it uncomfortable? I was very committed to wearing the whole suit. Um, <laughs> very committed. And it weighed 50 pounds. It wow. was extremely heavy. And walking in it, was, I mean, it's, it's really big and it's really heavy. And <laughs> it, was, it was a very interesting experience. And the camera was right here on, on the helmet. So it was just right here. And, 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 and then everything was shot on the green screen. So there was, I was not. There was no Europa images. <laughs> was it was it balanced? I mean, was it easy to it move was, or just heavy? Yeah, it had like straps right here that you would put in, and I would go in it, and then they would strap me in so I couldn't get out. I needed somebody to like take me out of it because everything. This suit is designed in. not to be used on Earth in Earth gravity, like a real <laughs> space suit. Like she's yeah. not going to say this was an instrument of torture. This was not a comfortable <laughs> suit. <laughs> oh, no, wait a second. No, I didn't know this. So it was. You would have to take breaks. Every like 10 minutes, you'd be like, okay, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. I can't. Really and you have, have to have somebody come in and help you out and, and then take you out of it. It, it, took, it took a little bit. Yeah. But it was funny, I went first before all the guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then... Read books and um, to, to understand, you know, what they might go through under so much pressure and how to deal with situations. And, and um, there was a lot of this, this kind of, there was uh, two weeks of, um, rehearsal to talk about all these things and um, the, the, the book, what is it? I keep forgetting the book. The, um, packing, for, packing for Mars? Yeah, it's a great book. Oh, yeah. It's a great uh, book. Harry Roach? Yeah, and it packing talks Mars, about like, the, the, the kind of training they have to go through and how they get tested to even be able to to go into space and, and um, yeah. So it's, uh, there was a lot of search, research and talk about all that stuff. Um, yeah, so a lot of what Kevin and I do uh, involves assessing uh, what are the sources of energy uh, from a seafloor composed of rock directly in contact with water uh, and materials on the surface um, that could be brought together to support life. And also we think about um, uh, how or what the ne next mission uh, should be um, to explore Europa. All right, I wanna, wait, 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 I want to stop you there. Hang on, I'm taking moderator privilege here. Sure. Say that again about how much water is on Europa compared to how much water is on Earth. So the total, do you want to take this? Or all that? Come on. Sure, the, uh, if you do the math, uh, as Steve mentioned, the ice shell is a few to maybe as much as 10, possibly 15 kilometers thick, and underneath that ice shell is this global liquid water, and when, 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 you, when we say water, we mean H2O, good old-fashioned water. It's got some salt in it, and, and uh, you know, you might not want to drink it. But that ocean is a global ocean that's 100 kilometers deep, roughly. You do the math, it turns out that Europa harbors two to three times the volume of all the liquid water on Earth. And what motivates now, I've been obsessed with aliens since I was a young kid, and uh, you know, always wanted to be, you know, go home with ET and all that stuff. Uh, and, and what motivates much of my interest in the search for life elsewhere is finding living life, finding life that we can poke at and prod at and see whether or not there's a different way of getting the business of life done. Uh, is DNA, RNA, uh, is the DNA, RNA, and protein paradigm that? powers all life on Earth. Is that the only game in town, or is there there's some other way that uh, biology could work? Are we just one example? Is our tree of life on Earth just one example on a periodic tree of life? That's the kind of question that we're, we're pursuing when we go to a place like Europa. Wow. Uh, when it comes to what's next, um, part of what gets Steve and I out of bed in the morning, um, different beds, um, <laughs> the, the, uh, it, it is this, um, this realization that, you know, w within the next few decades, we are going to have the chance to answer this primordial question of are we alone? Uh, that is incredibly exciting. No time in human history has anybody actually been able to build the, the, the spacecraft, to, to design the, the tools and techniques to actually go out and answer this question. And so we work with a generation of scientists that, uh, that helped launch Galileo and Cassini, and we're working to, to uh, get the Europa Clipper and other missions going. And many of you in the audience may go on to become scientists that, it might not be within your lifetime that astronauts go to Europa, but um, 
but maybe a melt probe, maybe a, a submersible that actually goes down and, and sees these bizarre creatures that might live under that subsurface ice. So it's really a, a, a profound time to be alive and, and do these experiments and ask these questions.